All right, I think we should be live now, but I'm gonna wait a few seconds. All right, cool. What's up, Hacksters? Yesterday we went to Risk 5 down in Santa Clara, which is a long way from our office, but it was really fun anyway. We got to stop by Maxim Integrated, which I might not have been supposed to say, but it was really cool and I, their people were neat, so I'm excited about that. Um, this is dedicated to Risk 5, uh, the architecture, super open source friendly. Uh, you might have heard of the Sci-5 um, High Five development board, which is based on, I think, the Freedom 310. Oh boy, should have looked that part up before I. One second. High Five One, there we go. Uh, we've actually done a video on this before. It's basically an Arduino form factor uh, board that is based on the Freedom E310. There we go. <laughs> which is uh, the industry's first commercially available Risk V SOC. Cool. Um, and it was a fairly small conference, but there was a lot of cool stuff. So first up, I want to show you some of the things we ran into. This was my favorite one. Okay, what was this person's name? It was Elkim Rua. He had this thing that looks like a game controller, but it's a programmable neural net that you hold in your hands. Uh, this is him demonstrating it. So basically on the right hand here, you've got four little LEDs that are controlled by those arrow keys. But you see that the ones on the left do not follow the ones that you're pushing. So what you do is you push the training button, he's about to hit there, uh, it turns on that light to show, and then you push uh, the correct arrow key, and then it's corresponding one on the left. And what you're doing is teaching it that those two keys correspond to each other. Uh, and once you've done that for all four, you hit the training button again to go back into regular demo mode, and suddenly the one on the left is following the one on the right. You've just trained a neural net uh, in like four seconds just by pushing some buttons on a pseudo game controller. It's really cool! Uh, I love this thing, and I'm curious as to how they did the etched PCB. It almost looks like a bantam milled one, um, but it's just like, ugh. Really nice design, really nice little uh, 3D printed silver uh, enclosure for it, and uh, just a, a beautiful demo project, and it's so rare that I go to a conference and I see something like this that has like just the perfect maker aesthetic. Uh, I mean, you know, stuff for like more advanced developers is awesome and all. Speaking of which, um, we also ran into these uh, little robot arms. So these were advertising a group called Zero x5 hex5 so hexadecimal 0x uh, is the sort of prefix for hexadecimal numbers so this is hex5 security uh multi-zone security i'm not sure how the robot arms actually related to the <laughs> uh the their security protocol company thing uh i couldn't actually find any information on it but they had these on a bunch of the different tables and it seemed that everyone had their own controller uh, controlling the robot arm, and they all took the same code. So if you see that computer over on the side of the screen, uh, over there, uh, it has some lines of code, green on black, extremely classic, and basically you would type send 3-1 to start the robot doing this little animation, and then send 3-0 to make it stop. So it's got this pre programmed thing where it tries to like grab something from over on the right and then sort of presents it to you uh, and you have to grab it before it lets go. <laughs> Whee! So all of them kind of did the same thing, uh, but you know, it could hold this little pen. Uh, it wasn't too happy about that, you could hear it sort of ratcheting around it, but uh, it did work. That's Jessica, uh, who decided to put the pen in there, unfortunately did not manage to catch it. Then there was a pretty... <laughs> I'm not gonna say... I don't want to say it was creepy, but it was kind of creepy. This is a big teddy bear from Micro Semi. <laughs> it has a, a camera underneath the nose there, and what it did was it had like one sort of Terminator eye that showed... It basically does the same thing that my owl Archimedes does, where it tries to tell if you're happy or sad. It has a little screen that sort of shows you that. Uh, but see, it's it's got this it's got this sort of green eye flashing for happy and blue for something else, and it looks a little dystopian. <laughs> Uh, it had this cool box though underneath, like showing all the uh, the sort of electronic guts that were running it. It also had two servos that would control the arms that would sort of flap if it thought you were really happy. <laughs> Pardon me while I smack around my camera here. Uh, yeah. So then finally, uh, 
I saw a stall for Platform.io. The people weren't actually there, but there was someone very helpful from the <laughs> the uh, opposite booth. I think they were from Sci5, um, who helped a lot by explaining to me, I've actually had Platform.io installed in my Atom uh, IDE for a long time, and I've never used it because I've always clearly meant to come back and use it. Uh, it's just been set up. Uh, and so I had to relearn what it was. It's an open source ecosystem for IoT development. So, um, you know, what they say about it, everything you would expect, rapid development, C and C++, intelligent code completion, which is cool. You can use this as a replacement IDE for Arduino. And it does extra things like code completion. Um, let me see if I can pull up this window for you. Actually, I was messing around with it, trying to get it to program an itty tiny. Um, at tiny, however you say it. <laughs> People have different opinions on that. Um, let's bring this up. Okay, cool, yeah. So I imported an Arduino program that I've already had, uh, and it basically added this little git ignore file, so it's all ready to be uploaded to GitHub, which is interesting. It has a little readme file already set up in a little folder for tests. So you can like, it sort of automatically sets up this whole test system for you. Uh, at the bottom of the window here, let me sort of compress this a bit. It's got a built-in serial monitor um, with some feedback. I was getting some errors and it doesn't tell me what the errors are, but I think it has to do with these packages that needed to be rebuilt, which is a little surprising because they don't seem to like, I'm not doing anything with Python or whatever, but, um, I'll come back to that. <laughs> anyway, uh, ooh, go away. I want to try rebuilding my little project here. Ah, I don't need PyMaker! Anyway, <laughs> so, but if I open up a new thingy-majig here, it will show you the Py, um, Platform.io sort of welcome screen. Let me open this for you. This is the wrong one. <laughs> there we go. Platform IO home. Uh, and this kind of automatically opens up now. Stop it with the pie maker. We don't care about pie maker. <laughs> uh, not right now, anyway. Um, but yeah, you can import Arduino projects. You can start a new project. You can open a project. You can look at project examples uh, with different things. Um, you can see that they had actually exhibition passes available for the Risk Five Summit, just where I was. Cool. Um, oh, this is too large for you. One sec. There we go. Anyway, Platform.io seems to have a lot of promise. Uh, I would love to get this up and running, see if it'll uh, be friendly with my Arduino code. Because uh, it seems like lately with the SAMD-based boards, I've been having some issues getting those to program from the Arduino IDE itself, so I'm always looking for sort of alternatives. So there's the online Arduino IDE, uh, and then there's this Platform.io dude, which you can also use not just with Arduino, obviously, with other things as well. And it's kind of cool that it does do this. I found a neat video from someone on the internet uh, explaining his point of view on it. Um, if you want to get a really quick sort of intro to its benefits for an Arduino user, uh, check out Curio 2 Minutes Tuesday Platform IO Arduino IDE Killer question mark question mark. Uh, I mean, I would still probably use both, but it does seem pretty convenient, uh, especially for managing a large number of projects. So, um, yeah, cool. And as I mentioned, it comes as a plugin for Atom as well as other uh, existing IDEs that you might already be using. Let's see if it has any other cool stuff. It has a unified debugger. Oh yeah, it has a built-in uh, linter, so it'll check your Arduino code as you're programming, I think. Um, develop tests right in the IDE for unit testing. Library manager. Thousands of popular libraries are browsable with examples within the IDE. Very cool. Um, and it's free and open source. Right now they have 550 plus embedded boards. If you start a new project in it, um, I'm just gonna go on about this for a minute because I think it's it could be really useful for people. So if I say to import an Arduino project, um, basically it'll ask me first what kind of a board I want to initialize the project for. Uh, and so I just put in at tiny85, it's right there, cool. 
Um, and then I can go and browse to find my project. And that's how I imported the ones that I was playing around with earlier. Super cool. So hopefully I'll be able to program my bike lights using this now. Uh, I'm always trying to revive, revise and revamp my bike lights because they have cool stuff that they do. Uh, and it encourages me to ride my bike. Um, yeah, so that was, oh yeah, and finally, I haven't unboxed this yet, yet. I'm going to unbox it on Monday. So we have the RV32M1-Vega, which is a development board that has like a an accelerometer, a bunch of different sensors and stuff. It's open source, it's super nice. Uh, and you'll hear more about that on Monday. So if you're curious, stay tuned. Uh, you can go to www.open-isa.org uh, if you're impatient, like me. And uh, maybe, hopefully, we'll have this thing doing some more cool... This is the at Tiny 84 board. 85, my bad. Uh, and I'm gonna stick a bunch of LEDs on this. Like, we got... We got 12 LEDs here. We got a whole, like, ring of 24 more NeoPixels over here. So we're gonna do something silly. Maybe some kind of, like, weird bike headlight. Anyway, yeah. Have a great uh, rest of your Thursday. We'll see you tomorrow for Fundum Friday. And, uh, yeah. Stay chilly. <laughs> Not too chilly. Uh, have your own. Ciao.